Hello, I'm Kyle Ruddy from the Technical Marketing Team, and in this session, we're going to be taking a demo-based look at all of the latest and greatest features that are coming with the release of Console Terraform Sync 0.3. And that includes the highly anticipated integration with Terraform Enterprise. So let's dive into our demo environment here where we have a console cluster stood up and there's one service that we want to keep an eye on throughout the entire demo, and that's the free t-shirt service. This service is backended by a Nomad container instance that is issuing out a web service. This web service allows folks to connect to it and send out free t-shirts. Now, in this case, there's only one instance that's stood up and backing that web interface. And because everybody loves free swag, we don't really have a high confidence rate that this is going to be able to withstand the performance required of it. So what we're going to be doing is using the power of console and service discovery alongside the infrastructure automation capabilities of Terraform to stand up an F5 based load balancer and then have console Terraform sync look at it behind the scenes and continue to monitor this particular service to make sure that every time that there is an instance either added to or removed from that the F5 load balancer pool continues to have the most up-to-date information about those members so that we can maintain the level of performance that we need to for this web service. So let's dive right into the console Terraform sync configuration here to kind of show you what's happening behind the scenes. Here we have our configuration file. It starts off with a console block just telling CTS where to talk to, in this case, of one of our console nodes. Then we have the brand new network driver that's called Terraform Cloud that allows us currently to reach out and talk to Terraform Enterprise. Note Terraform Cloud in integration is coming soon, but right now with the 0.3 release, it's for Terraform Enterprise. Here we can notice our host name and our organization has been specified. And then we have some familiar Terraform code, such as our required providers, in this case, big IP. Then we have the credentials and the authentication that goes in for how Terraform talks to our big IP. And then here is where the magic happens with CTS, and that's in our task block. Here we have our name, and that name is very important because this is also going to be what matches the name within Terraform Enterprise. So this is gonna be your workspace name. So keep that in mind when using this. Then we have our description and then the source. The source is going to be the module that Terraform is making use of as console Terraform sync talks in between console and Terraform. Then we have the specification of our providers, which is big IP and the service that we want console Terraform Sync to monitor within our console environment. So at this point, we're ready to run our uh, CTS instance. Here we're logged into a server where console Terraform Sync has been installed. Note, you can run this as a service or you can run this as an interactive uh, daemon mode. Uh, in this case, we're going to be running this as an interactive service so that we can see all of the output that's coming across here since, you know, additionally, we're in debug mode. So we're seeing very verbose output, uh, including this link right here that's going back to that workspace within our Terraform Enterprise environment. You know, note right there, it's AS3 that matches up with the name within our task. So now the first time that I ran this, it went through into our big IP appliance here and set up a couple different things. Now, while I'm not going to do this in this demo because it does take a little bit, but I do want to show you what's happening. So here it created and stood up this web server virtual server. Uh, we can see that it has the free t-shirt description. We have a destination um, IP and port. Then we have our pool. The pool is going to be important because on the back end, this members list is going to be what matches up to the instances that are within that free t-shirt service in console. So now we're ready to go ahead and apply some additional pool members uh, within this load balancer. And to do that, we have to go to our Nomad job description, uh, which we have right here. So in this case, we only had that one instance. So let's go ahead and build this out to, let's say, five instances. Build this up a little more. Now, I also want to call out the service block that's defined here within our task. This service is going to be what allows Nomad to call into console to register the service. So the important parts here are first and foremost, the service name, free t-shirt. That's what CTS is going to be looking to monitor. 
then we also have some additional metadata that's required by F5 in order to maintain the, the virtual server IP, that port, and then also what template it should be using at the point of creation. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and copy out our job definition, head over to Nomad, and run our job. So here we can see our count going from one to five without any other changes. So here is these start, these additional instances start up. We should be able to start seeing that here in console. We can see that we now have two instances. We can then jump over to our Terraform enterprise environment where we can also already see this AS3 workspace uh, that we've also gone ahead and used Terraform tags within there, uh, workspace tags to, to further designate and kind of call out this workspace, has already started some uh, plan and additional further Terraform operations. So while that's running, because it's going to take a little bit as those instances spin up for console Terraform Sync to recognize all of them, let's cover some of the additional features that we can also use within Terraform Enterprise. Uh, one of the largest ones here is around the auto apply method. So here we can specify either auto apply, which means console Terraform Sync has the ability to go through the plan process and get to the apply and uh, you know roll right through, or you can get to the manual apply, meaning that somebody with the required permissions can come in and has to approve whatever that plan, uh, the output of the plan is going to be before it actually makes those changes. Then we also have some additional areas within the notifications where we can either create a webhook or send an email or maybe even a Slack message. In this case, we're using Slack to uh, reach out and connect and send out all of the actions that are happening within this workspace. And then lastly, the big one here is policy as code. Sentinel in the policy as code and framework is tremendous at helping with this. And we've created a policy set specific for console Terraform Sync in this demo environment. So now it looks like we've kind of reached the, the point where it's it's figured out everything that needs to happen. So if we check into our latest run here, we can see our, our plan output here. So we have our five different nodes that it's going to be adding into uh, the mix there. We can see that our policy checks have passed. We have a big IP provider check saying that we only want Terraform operations to per be for performed if the big IP provider is uh, the the uh, the provider being used. We have a Terraform version check to make sure that we're using Terraform 1.0 or newer. And then we have the CTS operation policy. And that just checks to make sure that the call you know, initially originated from console Terraform sync. So they all passed. So we're ready to roll. And I have permissions to hit the confirm and apply button. So we'll go ahead and do that. And here within a couple seconds, we should see that come up. But while that's running, let's check out Slack so you can kind of see how, how this looks. Of course, I have the most verbose option set for Slack as well. So we see uh, that our, our Sentinel policies were checked but needs attention. Have a little bit of a heads up there. We can see that our run was applying and then it looks like our run has finished applying. So if we check out our run, apply finished, should be good. So if we head back to our, our big IP and we refresh our members list, we now have those five new instances that were registered to our free t-shirt service. So that was a really quick look at that, but I wanna cover a couple other things that are available with console Terraform Sync 0.3. And these are some really great functionalities that allow us to, to have a little bit more freedom in the way that we define those services. Uh, so in this case, there's this notion of condition that can be added within our task block where we can define it using regular expression uh, to say, you know, hey, maybe we have more than just free t-shirt. We want to stand up load balancers to support all of our free giveaways, you know, maybe stickers and, and whatever else. But then this allows us to continue down that path to support all of those within the same task. And that means that they're supported all within the same Terraform Enterprise workspace. Then another great feature here is the ability to then also understand and, and kind of grasp um, or um, define out the catalog services, filter out these services so that we can tell it that we only want it to be in a specific data center that's been defined. And we also can look at even the metadata information so that we can say that, you know, we only want those systems that have been defined with the metadata that have that one particular uh, virtual server IP address. So adds in some, some really great 
filtering capabilities in order to, to support um, a, a little wider variety of, of what we're able to do using console Terraform Sync. So with that, that was a really quick rundown of all the latest and greatest features that are coming with Console Terraform Sync 0.3, including that great new addition of the Terraform Cloud Network Driver that allows us to now take our Terraform state and store that within Terraform Enterprise, as well as maintain some of those additional features that Terraform Enterprise brings, such as notifications and Sentinel policy as code checks. Thank you.